right, welcome back to Bible Time. This is Joseph Part 2. You ready to hear more of the story? Okay, well, let's open up God's true word and find out what happens to Joseph next. What book of the Bible should I open up to? Do you remember from yesterday? That's right, the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Remember, God made a promise to his people that he had a special plan for his people. And when God promises, he will do it because God is faithful. God is faithful. Our story starts today in the book of Genesis, chapter 40. You ready? Where are we going to find Joseph in Genesis chapter 40? Do you remember where he was? Yeah, he's in prison. That's right. In a prison in Egypt. What did he do to get to Egypt? Did he do anything wrong? Yeah, that's right. His brothers. And what did he do wrong to get into prison? Nothing. That's right. Well, let's find out what's going to happen to Joseph in prison. I'm going to tell you about two people that were in prison with Joseph. This is a special prison because only people that work for the king end up there. Remember, Joseph was working for Potiphar, who was under the king. And Joseph is in prison with these two people, a cupbearer and a baker. Now, a baker, you all know what a baker is, right? What does a baker do? Yeah, a baker makes breads, a baker makes cakes. We like the bakers, right? A cupbearer is not something we have these days. A cupbearer has a funny job. A cupbearer is in charge of the cup. For the king. A cupbearer is in charge of the cup for the king because sometimes people plot and try to kill the king. And a common way to do that is through poisoning. So the cupbearer will take the king's cup before letting the king drink and drink from it. And if the cupbearer lives, now the king can have his cup and drink too. Well, Joseph was in charge of the prisoners. And one day the cupbearer and the baker looked just really kind of disturbed. They had this kind of upset look on their face that day. And Joseph said, hey guys, what's going on? You, you could look kind of upset. What's, what's going on? And both of them said the same thing. They said, we had this dream last night. And we know it's important. It doesn't make any sense though. And, and here we are in prison and we can't ask anybody. And Joseph said, well, you know, sometimes God speaks to people through dreams. And it's up to God to give you an answer. Tell me what your dream was about. And so first, the cupbearer told his dream. He said, I had a dream that there was a vine with three branches. And out of these three branches, there were three blossoms. And quickly, out of the three blossoms came three bunches of grapes. And I took those grapes and I squeezed them and made wine and put it into the king's cup. What does that mean? Joseph said, I'll tell you what it means. The three is for three days time. In three days, you will be restored to your position. You will again get to be a cupbearer for the king. You're gonna to get to leave prison in three days. Good news, right? Wonderful. The baker said, hey, I wanna hear some good news. Tell me some good news. All right, what's your dream about? I had a dream about three baskets. These three baskets were filled with all kinds of baked goods and I was carrying them on my head. And while I was carrying them on my head, some birds came down and ate everything out of my baskets. What does that mean? Joseph said, well, the three is for three days time as well. But in three days, you're going to die. You're going to be killed hanged. Well, in three days time, that's exactly what happened. The cupbearer was restored to his position and the baker, he was hung. The cupbearer, before he went back, Joseph said, remember me. Can you tell the king about me? Because I didn't really do anything wrong to get here in prison. I didn't really do anything wrong here to get here in Egypt. I'm, I'm Hebrew. Can you, can you tell the king about me? No. You see, the cupbearer did indeed go back to his job, but then forgot about Joseph. For two whole years, Joseph stayed in prison, forgotten, until the king himself had a dream. And not just one dream, two dreams. You ready for these dreams? These are some crazy dreams. The first dream the king had was about cows. 
The king had a dream that there were seven big, fat, wonderful cows. And then there were also seven sickly, sad looking skinny cows. And the seven skinny cows ate the big fat cows and still looked skinny in the end. And then he woke up. And then he had another dream after that and he dreamed about grains. He dreamed that there were seven big, beautiful, plumpy ears of grain along a stalk. And then there were these seven sad looking grains that ate up the good ones and still look sad in the end. What in the world does this mean? Well, the king did as any wise person would do in Egypt and said, get the wise men together, get the magicians together. I'm sure they can explain. And he told them all about the cows and the grains and said, what does it mean? And they didn't know. Well, Guess who was in the room hearing about dreams and the interpretation of dreams? Yeah, the cupbearer. The cupbearer was there. The cupbearer heard and said, Oh, king, I can't believe I forgot. I forgot. When I was in prison, along with the baker, we both had this dream, and we told a guy, his name was Joseph. We told Joseph all about it, and Joseph told us, what our dreams meant and he was absolutely right. Well, go get Joseph, go get Joseph. And so they got Joseph out of prison. They shaved him up and put some real nice clothes on him and brought him before the king. And the king told Joseph all about his strange dream about the cows and his other dream about the grains and said, you know, I've asked all the wise men, all the magician, nobody knows what this dream is about. And Joseph said, well, it's not up to people to decide these things. God is responsible. God can tell you. And so he told Joseph what the dreams were. And Joseph, through God, told the king what they meant. Joseph said the two dreams are one and the same, and the seven represents years. There will be seven good, wonderful years where your harvest will be plentiful. There will be so much food, more food than your people need. And after those seven good years, represented by the good fat cows and the good grains, there will be seven sad years, seven years of famine, where the grains will not grow and the land will not produce food for your people. That's what the skinny cows and the sad grains of wheat represent. And so Joseph went on to explain, you know what, King, now that you know this ahead of time, you can plan for this. I would recommend that in those seven years of good harvest, you will start to store some of the food for your people. Maybe take about one-fifth of every harvest and put it in a storehouse so that when those seven years of famine come, you'll have plenty of food for your people. The king said, this is wonderful. This is a great plan. And now I need someone in charge of the land. And I can't think of anyone else but you, Joseph. You should be in charge of all the land all across Egypt. And he took his ring and he gave it to Joseph and said, this ring shows everyone that you are number two. I am still the king over Egypt, but you are number two. You're in charge of everything else. You only answer to me. Wow. Now Joseph is no longer a prison. He is number two in the land of Egypt. And indeed, of course, what God told him was going to happen really did happen. There were seven years of good harvest, and Joseph stored all the food, and then there were seven years of famine, not only in Egypt, but all across the world. And the land of Egypt was ready because God had blessed Joseph with the interpretation of dreams. God spoke to Joseph. Sometimes God does speak through dreams, but God also speaks in another way, one that all of us have. How else does God speak to you and to me? Yeah, God speaks to us through his word, through the Bible, right? And everything in here is true. You can go and read the true story of Joseph and see what's going to happen next. God is amazing. God is faithful, and his plan for his people it's going to come to pass. Is this the end, do you think? Is this the end of the book of Genesis? Is this the end of Joseph's life? He gets a great job. He's good, well taken care of. 
Wait a minute now, what about his brothers? I didn't hear anything about justice there. I don't think we're done with the story. We have a little bit more to go, and we'll leave that for next time. But for now, remember that God is faithful. His promises are going to come to pass. God has a special plan through this family. Remember, the Lord Jesus is coming to make all things new. Just gotta wait for it. Till next time.